What's that subscribe button doing there? Go away. These are top tiers in this game, I think. I think it's these two plus Ryu plus Bison. I don't remember where High Cuff Glitch is. My man, my man is busy. Uh, just got dizzy, just like that. I actually beat World Warrior today. Like I was playing it earlier today. Isn't that funny? I was playing it on my Raspberry Pi. These are bees. Where are my A's at? My DP is just so safe to whiff in this game. I never... I always hated the slowdown of fucking Hadoukens and Fireballs. Jesus, look how low risk that is. It's safe on block too, even in SD. He probably had a combo there. What a good DP. Safe jump. Oh, the reversal throw. Clutch. When two people throw at the same time, you have to reset the opponent in order to throw them. Like, they have to enter neutral or whatever. And if they get a throw at the same frame that you do, it's just a coin flip who gets it. So in any throw reset, as long as the, you're in throw range two, there's a chance they'll throw you. Nice. Oh, he tried his OS, but it didn't work. You can't jump out of throws either in this game. I don't know about that, if you can just, if like, wake up throw, like fucking KOF, KOF 15. <laughs> if throws beat hits if done on the same frame, and throws have one frame set up, then you can do reversal throw. Some fighting games have that. This might be one of them, I have no idea. Look at that, that's about the longest combo you'll ever see in CE. And it's just beautiful. Look how short and simple it was. Oh, look at that. Walk and sweep. It's like very... Bec your actions feel like individual actions. Rather than sequences. In this game. Which is kind of interesting. Um, old T-Hawk and Old Ken are the kind of notorious ones. Also Old Ryu a little bit. Old Ken and Old Ryu both have really good DPs. I think Ryu might have slightly better fireball recovery, but I don't remember. Losing the super is unfortunate because Ryu's super is actually quite good. Oh yeah, random unblockable Tatsu. Uh, old T-Hawk is really notorious for being better than new T-Hawk. Because back in old... Old T-Hawk didn't have... Um, he had better hitboxes on his attacks. All of T-Hawk's attacks in Super just had bigger hitboxes and smaller... I mean, bigger hitboxes, smaller hitboxes. Did they add a throw whiff for T-Hawk? I don't remember if that's a thing. You never see new T-Hawk. People never even pick it. One of the big things about old T-Hawk is he has no throw whiff. Uh, yeah, it's... Um, that's not... Well, I don't know. It might be true that it was taken from Rikio. Um... The character that M. Bison is based on is based on the same character as the villain of Rikio, which is the villain from Tokyo The Last Megalopolis. It's about to go to bed, and here I am watching old Ken versus old, well, you know, really old Ken versus really old guy. I saw someone comment on that recently. This kind of thing can kill you in uh, Street Fighter 2, in all versions of Street Fighter 2. Look, Ken does this fireball, and then during the slowdown of Gal getting hit, you can see him commit to the new fireball. I paused it so you couldn't really see. But like, look how, look how easily you can react to Ken throwing the fireball here. 
I've seen people comment on this. I never even thought about it. It's something you would only think about if you were playing the game. Being able to react to stuff that people are doing during the fireball slowdown. In this case, it didn't matter at all, because guy was getting hit by a fireball from halfway across the screen. See that? See how his like startup was fucking forever? I saw footage one time, I think Majestros posted, where he was talking about um, um, an M. Bison player in a match like committed to a sweep during that slowdown frame. Like he got he blocked the fireball and then committed to the sweep as a new one was coming out or so I don't remember. And it just gave the Shoto like f completely free. It would have been a safe sweep, but the Shoto just um DP'd it on the way in. Yeah, Jeb, Jeb DP is really hard to whip punish in every fucking game, but this is probably the hardest it's ever been. I think 99% of fighting game players probably won't remember this, but Vanilla Ken in SF4 had a very hard light DP to whiff punish. And they nerfed that going into super. Ken wasn't considered to be a, t a top tier. He was, like, good in Vanilla. He was considered to be, like, top 10. He was considered to be one of the stronger characters in the game. Um... But he was like a like an okay character, and he wasn't really nerfed or buffed. I think he got a couple like random kind of semi nerf things. But uh, that was super crazy. They added like quite a lot of recovery to Jeb DP between um, SF4 Vanilla and Super. Their shadows are ball sacks. They look more like peaches or maybe hearts to me. But, you know, maybe it's maybe it's a ball sack. The shadows get more detail than every Street Fighter game, I think. Every Street Fighter 2 version. Maybe not all of them, but like a lot of them. They changed like three times. Let's make some key count. See how he just does that? Look. And like look at the whiff punish, just low forward, like what whoever. Who cares? How is he not dizzy? This game is crazy sometimes. And how did that fucking fireball not kill him? Sometimes you just fucking I don't know. Um that's reused fireball trap. It's quite notorious. You're kinda fucked. Well other characters have it too, but Reuse is considered to be the best one by Super Turbo. In other fighting games, huh? Like, bro? Or it's not in that many fighting games. You know I play, like, SF4, SF5, and SF6, right? And also, like, King of Fighters. I feel like there's another fighting game I played a lot. I played Mar uh, Marvel Infinite, actually. I got quite a lot of mileage out of that game. Uh, SF4... I mained Vega in Vanilla, and then I kind of kept him in the pocket for the the rest. In Super, I played Guy, but I was never that good with him, and kind of just still mained Vega. Um, AE onwards, or AE and AE 2012, I mained Evil Ryu. I was a big believer in the Evil Ryu art, so I was like, this character is very slept on. And then two versions in a row, they buffed him when I thought he was already okay. And then, of course, we ended up with a top tier Evil Ryu. He was already like a good character in S in SSF ah AE twenty twelve. And then the buffs brought him to the top one. And then yeah, once Elena came out I made Elena. I was actually a very decent Elena. What a jump. I wonder if Flash Kick would've worked there. Checkmate. Uh, King of Fighters, the only King of Fighters games I've really played seriously were, um, 13 and 15. And in those games I played, um, uh, Kenso, Ryo, Shen, and then, um, Saiki, uh, Ryo, Kenso later on in 13. That was pretty good. Wasn't great. Uh, 15 I played, um... Oh god, I haven't thought about it in a minute. <laughs> it was uh, Yuri, someone Rio. Oh, it was, it was uh, Dolores. Yuri, Dolores, Rio. 
I just couldn't picture her for some reason. Later. Yeah, he is. I really like watching current KOF 15 because I love Rio. I like when people hit the big beefy combos. But a lot of people just do like the 1EX or the 1EX and super stuff, which is, you know, it's fine. Psycho Crusher is the most stupid it's ever been in this game. It's just safe, it doesn't ask ton of chip. If you do it media, it can be on either side. In Marvel Infinite, I originally played Chun Li Iron Man, and then I eventually shifted over to. Uh, Cap Strider. New Fatal Fury looks good. And Bison is so fucking oppressive once he gets you blocking stuff. The instant overhead, the fuzzy. Didn't work though. Kane? Kane or Heinlein? Probably everyone from fucking Gar is coming back, right? You're close. I don't know who's currently in Fatal Fury. I don't know who's confirmed. I will bet all the money in my bank account that um, Terry and Rio are there. Or not Rio, what the fuck? Um, uh, Rock. Um, yeah. He still has like touch of touch of Dizzy on jumps and stuff. Um, I would not be surprised at all if... Um, some version of Griffin is in the game already. I don't know if it's going to be the actual Griffin, t or like, you know, um, you know, the dinosaur or what. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Gato or Hotaru are confirmed. Both seem very lucky, likely. I think we're going to get a uh, Kogen Ryu, but I don't know who it's going to be. Maybe Lee Kushnud. Maybe Kushnud's already confirmed. Here's a little ninja kid. Is he in the game? He had a long name, I don't remember what it was. I don't play Guilty Gear. They, I don't like watching them. <laughs> they never made me want to play them. Okay, tomorrow. What a punish! These combos are so beefy. Is that Dizzy? No. Is that Dizzy? Jesus. This game is crazy. This guy's ass kicked repeatedly and no Dizzy. Mm -hmm. It's not evenly distributed between moves either. Some attacks probably do very low Dizzy and other attacks probably do very high Dizzy. The World Warrior colors look so fucking good. It's so stupid that you can't pick these colors in, um... Um... In ST. Without picking the old version of the character. What if I just want to pick Red Ken? I feel like he could have lived through that throw. Just chance. God, every time I remember that my classmate who I went to clinical with made it, got his, got a, he passed the test too. I get happy. Do you guys know what I mean? What a good feeling. Let me find another one. This one has a Honda player on it. 
I don't know anything about ST Honda. He probably just still gets bodied by fireballs and bodies non fireballs. Marco's already in. Hell yeah. I'll play him. You'll never guess who I played in Garo. You would literally never guess. You might guess. I have no idea. Just pick a random character and it'll be the one. Now that I've said you never guess, you'll just guess immediately. It was Freeman, yeah. <laughs> I heard he was bad. So I didn't play him for a super long time. And then when I finally played him, I was like, I love this. I think if I really tried to get into the game, I'd play Kane. Because when I watched that game be played at a decent level, Kane is 100% like the Oro. He also seems to be quite good. Kane looks like the sleeper top. You know what I mean? I don't know what his actual tier is. But he looks like he's got the grime. He looks like he, you can get like kind of cheap with him. Where's Grant? Oh, that crouch fierce getting beat by the jump in is so fucking nice to see. Damn. Damn. I knew Ryan was, like, top one. I've seen people do that weird thing. I think a lot of several characters can do it, where they just, like, build meters super rapidly by doing some kind of double whiff. I don't know what's going on with that. I, like, knew at some point, and I've just forgotten. I knew Janet was good, too. So Grant and Kane are top tiers. I think I tried to watch a lot of Garo, and, like, I didn't like Ryan's gameplay, and it's, like, dominated by him. What? Ugh. Alright, hold on. Rotor cancel. Broken top series of Garo. They're all broken. Okay. I was thinking it would be match footage. If a fighting game isn't played that much, it's hard to even find A players. Dizzy. Was that all combo? It looked like it was. That looked like a, a three-piece. Jesus, look at him. He looks so stupid when he's jumping like that. There's something oddly satisfying about watching a Brazilian block a player. I know Blocka was not the most well-received character in um, Brazil, but I bet there were people who were just like, hell yeah. Damn. What do you do here? Sweep? Is there a thing you can do? Can you headbutt? Probably not. Is this just... Is this over? Oh my god! CE is the dumbest fighting game ever made. Oh, that, then he was too far on that one. He doesn't want to actually make them block it. He wants to just do it in front of them. Honest footsies. I think that was actually very honest. I think there wasn't anything grimy about that. It was either a pure knowledge check or a pure checkmate. I don't know which. It depends on whether there was actually like a way out. But he made it very clear what he was trying to do. There was no surprise. It was just like, can you stop me from doing this? 
Yes, Brazilians are electric and also they can double jump. Ah oh, yes, my favorite Brazilian Capcom character, Alboth, also known as Rikuo, from Darkstalkers. Now there's a Brazilian right there. If I was fucking Brazilian and that was my rep, I'd be like, hell yeah. That guy's sick. Oro is theoretically Japanese and not Brazilian. Blanca is theoretically English and not Brazilian. I don't know what the PS1 version does. The first actual Brazilian was Sean. In Street Fighter. Brazilians have had a rough time with their fucking video game representation. I gotta say, Banderas is about as cool as it gets. If I was Brazilian and I saw Banderas, I'd be like, hell yeah. This guy is fucking sick. Dive kick, baby. It is. They knocked it out of the park with those three. Roundhouse is so fucking nasty. I love love. KOF 14 had really cool, like, unique characters. There are a lot I'm really waiting to see again. There are a lot where I'm not really sure if they were new to that game or not. I loved Mien. I loved, uh, what's her name? Mui Mui. I loved Sylvie. I'm super happy Sylvie came back. I love Sylvie. I loved her in 14, and I love her even more in 15. There, I think there was a charge command grab in in Gyatagaras. I think it was a charge air throw, which is even weirder. Gyatagaras is the sickest fucking fighting game that no one plays. Time to find some Gyatagaras footage, see if we can find... Oh, that's a true anti-air. Only a few normals, air normals can come down on that and hit it. And I don't know if Honda has any of them. Hell yeah, bonus stage with both characters. Sylvie's design is insane, but in a good way. Jesus, they fucked that thing up. I've never seen it get destroyed so fast. I don't know which pair of characters can destroy it the fastest. I wouldn't be surprised if it was two Hondas. Fio is best girl of all time. She's in a KOF game. I love how Honda loses all this fucking weight when he gets burned. There's only like one body for someone being burned. That's true in every version of S of uh, 2, I think. So Honda just becomes skinny for a second. This is probably actually good for Honda. Okay, he dropped it. I don't know anything about the Maximum Impact games. They really could put a lot more Metal Slug characters in KOF.
Okay, look, that was jump short, and it actually beat the slide. So Honda might actually have a button that beats that. It's still a game. Okay, nice reversal throw. Thank you. Look at him go! He held up for so long. I don't know that I don't know if Honda's ever been able to do it forever in any game. In the pre internet days, uh Honda, Chun Li and Blanca were very popular in SF two, specifically because a lot of people didn't know how to do special moves. And you can find electricity, lightning legs, and uh Hundred hands without knowing what you're doing. Wow, it looks like he can hold it for a while. It looked like he stopped deliberately there. You don't want to see a Hyper Street Fighter 3. You don't want to see new generation Nabuki. She would be an excellent target for bad balance. Is Bot Slime in this game? I think he's just doing jump short. Have we seen a Bot Slime yet? Oh, he dropped it. You can do two low strongs, I think. Jesus. Uh, Ibuki's had a super plus jab forever, I think, yeah. I will do another bad balance, I promise. I've just been really lazy about it. It takes a lot of lab work. You can probably tell if you've ever watched any of the ones I've done that there's quite a lot of information in them. I'm very meticulous about making sure everything in it is pretty good, too. There's a lot of things I like think should go in, and then I lab it, and then it's like you know this isn't really this doesn't really qualify. The one I'm working on right now is Ae Yang, and he's actually relatively unexplored. There are only like two seriously good Ae Yang players for the whole lifespan of Ae, which was one year. There's some very on the surface crazy things Ae Yang could do. He had the low profile, low short, which is quite good. It was better than Yun's, because he had better conversions off of it, because Rekka. Um, Rekka FADC is crazy, but he actually kept that even into Ultra. Yang has the best Rekka of the four Rekka characters in SF4. Uh, no. I play no fighting game with a sidestep. I passed the Radiologic Technologist exam, ARRT. And now I am a licensed radiologic technologist. SF5 has no easy way of playing the old characters and no actual character worthy of a bad balance. People often ask me that. It's like, who would you do for bad balance for SF5? And the answer is no one. The ones I would consider are Falk at release, not because she's horrible, but just because she's incomplete. Um, and release Abigail and release Chun-Li. But none of them are actually, like, bad. Like, they have noticeably bad balance compared to the rest of SF5, but SF5 is very, very clean balance. Uh, Abigail's a season two character. I forgot about that. Release Abigail. Um, shoot. Day in the life of a newly qualified radiologic technologist. First of all, I have to get hired because right now I'm unemployed. I just finished school and I only just I haven't even uh, received my license yet. I'll get it in approximately three weeks. They have to confer with the school to confirm that I um actually did all the things that are required for my credentials. That looked like he was walking in, that looked like a low parry or like a high parry walking into a low in SF3. So that looked look like you always see that in SF3 but there is no high parry in this game. But he's walked forward into a low forward. I did work at Home Depot quite a while ago at this point. Uh the radiologic technology is a very in demand job. And I've also got two places that would hire me on the spot because I interned there and I was good. 
So if I wanted to work at the place where I was interning, which I kind of do and kind of don't, I could get hired there in one second. They would just take me on the spot. But I didn't love it. The first place I worked, I didn't like the people as much as the second place. But the, I liked the work more. There was more off time. And the x-rays were kind of more interesting. There were two locations where you could work. There was like an outpatient center and an inpatient center. Radiologic technologist is the person who pushes the button when you get an x-ray. And more importantly, he's the person who poses you when you get an x-ray. And... Uh, he's also the person who knows how you should, what a good x-ray looks like. Uh, yes, it is all radiology. Except possibly sonography. I think it's, it branches out differently from sonography. Yeah. That was something I was looking at, but that's another year of training. Hell yeah, look at them go. They're fucking breaking boxes together, but now they're fighting. There's some really goofy things you can do in these that are only possible here. Like, in the car stage, you can, like, put yourself in the car, put your back to the car so you can't get pushed back, and then there's, like, infinites. You can just do chaining normals that just continue to chain forever. Uh, I studied for two years. <laughs> I buckled down for um, uh, about three months. I think Bison actually has a block string infinite with those. I do not do Nexa, but it, I think it might be part of Red Tech. I think it's different. I think you don't, you might not need the same degree of specialization to do Dexa. I think you only need to know some kind of x-ray stuff. You need to know other things related to the machinery, but you don't need to know that much x-ray. Don't quote me on that. Uh, the one I have leads into CT, MRI, and um, uh, nuke med. And then interventional radiography as well. Uh, there are a lot of travel tech job application, like, postings. It's a very common thing for people to travel as a rad tech. If the pay is good, I'll move. But it has to be pretty good. I have to be at a different stage in my life, I think. Right now, I, I want to just make some money and get stable. So I want something kind of local and simple, where I can just kind of, like, build up my skills. Because I've, like, decent knowledge of how to do everything, but I've never... I've only barely worked alone. I'm not supposed to work alone at all as an intern. Um, but every single fucking person I worked with had me working alone frequently. Well, I'm supposed to work alone in a limited way. I'm supposed to be basically within shutting distance of the tech I'm with. But, yeah, it would be like, hey, um, I'm not going to name any names, and you guys wouldn't know them anyway. But it'd be like, hey, yeah, uh, go upstairs and shoot this x-ray on this guy. Uh, we only have three people here today, and we can't afford to just waste someone on this one. So just, you know, just go upstairs and shoot it. And if you have to repeat it, repeat it. And I'm just like, okay. Yes, sir. My exact words. See if there's any recent Yatagaras footage. I googled Yatagaras by itself and I'm getting fucking Geometry Dash. Which video against Alex Fi is 12? Yeah, it's Alex Fi. 
you could watch it from his perspective if you hopped into his um hopped into his stream. Uh I've been using um Aki. But I haven't been playing so much. I basically went straight from making patch notes videos to studying the fuck out of my exam. I've only done like casual stuff. By God, I will find current Yata footage. Is this game just dead? I mean, I kind of knew it was dead, but like, I can't find any footage that's like less than three years old. Alright, let me actually use the search parameters. Recently uploaded. Nothing. Filters. Sort by upload date. Yathagross, all super moves three years ago. It's like the fourth result. When I type Yathagrossi tournament. Am I allowed to handle radioactive materials? Uh, that would be something for Nuke Med and not me, and I don't know what ra I don't know what isotopes they use. All right, here's the absolute best I can do for Yata. Gonna look kind of small because I don't want to resize it. You guys are just gonna have to deal. I don't need commentary. I've got a human. I mean, obviously we have a human. We have a fucking English. I hate the commentator settings in this game. My actual, the thing I can't stand about this game is um, whenever you get any kind of hit, it says one hit combo on the side of the screen. I am a firm believer, as of this game, that you should not show the combo count until it's a two-hit combo. I find that shit supremely distracting. I did. I hate it. I think this is the one with a run. This is the El Forte of this game. There's a charge one and a one with a run. For the sword girls. They have really similar attacks but different hitboxes. And then this guy's like the fucking Akuma kind of. He's not much like the Akuma. He's like the third Shoto, would be more accurate. Well, he did an air fireball. It's kind of Akuma-ish, isn't it? The two base Shotos in this game, one is like a half Ryu, half Ken, and the other one's like a half Akuma, half Ken. I don't remember the character's names. This guy's like Azura or something like that. And then the girl's name is like Shino or something. Azure. And I think it was written on the screen there for a sec. Let me look at it. Shimo. I was pretty close on both. I find this game quite fun to play, and the combos are really cool too. But I never played it seriously. It was never, it never existed. It's a novelty. Stream dead. 
I have some drop frames, but I'm not seeing any more. I don't know what's up with Twitch today. You can hold two supers at once. You have access to both your supers all the time in this game. Uh, you pick a super before the match, but that super is stronger. But you still have access to both. It's kind of fun. And then EX moves cost half your super bar. Did I already say that? Every every character holds two super bars. I like the girl with the sword a lot. The fighting game I thought was the f the kind of the f most fun to play of all the fighting games I've ever just labbed. I, I, I never played it competitively, so I have no idea how it is to play competitively. I've seen a decent amount of footage of it, and it looks pretty interesting, albeit kind of badly balanced. Um, but it was Nitro Plus Blasters. I just, like, someone got it for me, and I just opened it up. And it's just, the combos feel so nice. Just playing the characters feels so good. It's a really random anime fighting game. I know nothing about it. But it just feels so clean. I like, labbed a bunch of characters in that game. And uh, the mechanics were fairly simple on paper. But like the stuff you could do with them were crazy complex. And the way the characters utilized the uh, mechanics were absolutely not what I was anticipating at all. The depth was great. The meters were super strange, though. Like, you know, you play old, street, you play old fighting games and you're kind of used to the, the meters resetting every round. Yes, Sonico is in it. As an assist and as a playable character, she's the only one who's both. She also kind of like really hurt the game when she came out, I think, because she's busted. When they make a DLC character who's just way better than everyone else. Yeah, Saya from Sayanota is in the game. She's like the doll sim. The 12, she's the 12. Um, anyway, you're probably used to playing an old fighting game and you have, like, meters that reset every round. But that they really take that to a crazy level in Nitro Plus. Yes, your animations are fucked up. Like, you have two assists that come back on a timer and then also your entire super bar empties between rounds and the assists are roman cancels so not only do you call an assist but it also makes you safe from whatever you were doing and also allows you to combo from anything most obscure fighting game i've played that's a candidate it's probably this one we're looking at right now yes yeah, across i mean if you it depends on what you mean by obscure A new version of this? I have no idea. This game has quite interesting characters, but you only see people play the same, like, five. Which is kind of a shame. I don't think I've ever seen anyone play Ko. And he's not even considered to be that bad of a character, I don't think. The Ninja Girl, I've never seen anyone play. I like... I rarely see Chadha, but he's super cool when I see him. Mm. 
No, the FGC is crazy. They all know. There's no fighting game where some random guy wouldn't be like, oh, I know about that. I could say fucking Genesis Power Rangers as a fighting game, and some guy would be like, oh, yeah, hell yeah, that's a great game. I played Black Ranger. There's a lot of fighting games that would have entered, like, complete obscurity if not for how bad they were. Like Shaq Fu. Or Time Killers. Time Killers is not notable for being bad, although it is bad. It's notable for being a Mortal Kombat ripoff. With some very infamous mechanics. Such as cutting off your opponent's head mid-fight. Um... I feel like I had a really good answer. Oh, how about 3D Balls? Remember that game? Or it might have been Balls 3D. Now that's a fighting game. There are a lot of fighting games that are kind of notorious, but not for the reason that they're fighting games. Like, Clay Fighters is quite well known, but not for its gameplay. People only talk about Clay Fighters either for its graphics or its rarity. Me. Brian F. That's all I got. Maybe Justin. I used to go to a blockbuster that had sculptures cut. Not like, you know, for sale. Just on a display kiosk. Who knows what happened to it. Back when it was a modern game. They didn't just have it set up just because. They had it set up because it was intended as a kiosk game. Sculptures cut is considered to be one of the rarest games. It's not supposed to be a good game, I don't think. Or interesting in any way. In fact, it's not even the only... It's just an alternate version of like a slightly more popular but still rare game. Clay Fighter 63 and the 3rd, or whatever the fuck it was called. Cool combo! Uh, it's not that cool. I think the retro games market is extremely stupid. It's just full of um uh what do you call that? I think it's just borderline fraud, like straight up. There was a case where it was established to be fraud recently. Uh not really. Not seriously. I played a same show game at some point. I think it was five special.
fight the big red guy. Kusara ghetto or something. With the bone. I see a bone, I'm like, hell yeah. Red tech sees bone. Hell yeah. I'm like, that's a radius right there. I don't know if it was a radius. I didn't pay super close attention. The radius is on the thumb side. A radiologist would say that's on the lateral side of your body because the thumb is on the lateral side of the body. The radius is the lateral forearm bone. There's no way Justin's 50. I don't believe it. My dude is timeless. He stopped at like 23. I want to see other characters. This is just a, a guy playing casually. So we might only see the one character on this side. Oh, we got the ninja girl. This is the character who I was talking about, how I've never seen anyone play her. And by God, there she was. Oh, we got Crow. Alright, Crow first. No, never mind. We got Ninja Girl. I remember when they called him Kid Marvelous. They did actually call him that. I like how when she throws the kunai, it shows the arc. It's an interesting thing. I don't know if it's good for her. It looks bad. Basically a Miko. I don't know. Her other super is super neat. She poisons you. And while you're poisoned, um, you take dramatically less pushback when you're eating attacks. So she can string together new combos. I don't know. She looks she's got that Shrine Maiden outfit. Like Remu. Her character design is super good. I like the way she stands. Her attacks look pretty cool. Love that super. It's so beautiful in its simplicity. Just one slice. We got a Yaido character. Having a super like that is great, actually. That's what Yaido is all about, baby. These jumps look kind of awkward. Guard crush. That bounce of her hip and the hand on the hip just works. It's good. Komaro. Kotaro. That's more typical. Oh, Hina? Hina. So this is the other one. This is the charge one, I think. Two of these sword girls. One of them has a run and the other one's a charge character. Dude, they should make a movie about Neido Cowboy. Holy shit. That's like Giles Far Roundhouse on this girl. Look at those hitboxes. The charge one has got hitboxes. We got Dante hitboxes in this bitch. I love movies about that fucking cultural, cultural, bizarre cultural synergy. Anyone ever see Ghost Dog? That was a good fucking movie. Forrest Whitaker. Go watch it. Go watch it right now. Close my stream. Go find Ghost Dog. Watch it.
fucking love Forrest Whitaker. Dante is something like that, yeah. The parry, the combo. fucking stages in this game. This is the one with the giant tongue with the nail going through it. They're all just PNGs. God, I just remembered the bizarre stages from Street Fighter EX. Masterpiece, that game. Street Fighter EX is the best game no one plays. It's a serious candidate for a top 5 Street Fighter title. EX2+. Plus. And approximately zero people have even seen the footage of it. Apart from me showing it off. It's such a randomly great game. That dizzy bar. I mean not dizzy with the stun bar. She can't block anything. She still can't block anything. Then it stays low for a while. EX did? I guess so. I find it kind of oddly charming in its early 3D appearance. No, EX is good. Dude, you better not be talking smack about Tekken 3. MK4 was bad. I was a huge MK9, MKX apologist. I didn't love or hate MK11. But I don't like MK1. I find it profoundly not fun to watch. And I, it's a shame because I liked a lot of the other, other ROM games. But MK4 is still the worst Mortal Kombat game by far. I don't remember much of MK4's single player. Or are you just talking about the modern ones? Because the modern ones have great single player. Like, don't get me wrong. Conquest mode in Deception is pretty great. And it's workable in Armageddon, too. I love that combo. Character for their aesthetic over their gameplay. No. I would not be an aura player if I cared about aesthetic. <laughs> My dude, Ugg. My dude, Totes Ugg. He's ugly. It's 4 a.m. What the fuck happened? That's true. I typically pick the oddball character whenever I play a fighting game for the first time. I just pick the fucking freak. But not necessarily the ugly freaks. Like, 12's not ugly. He's just weird. First time I played SF3, I picked 12. No, it's like 100% gameplay for me. I think people who base... I feel like the single most important thing to base your character pick on is um, where the character feels good to play. And I understand there are people who 
you know, they do it for her, as it were. But, like, I, I need to bring justice to jury. Uh, not far at all. I played a good amount of Hugo for a while, and then a good amount of Alex, and then I switched to Oro. And when I say a good amount, what I actually mean is months. So I played like, you know, like two months of Hugo, like three months of Hugo, and then like, you know, three months of Alex, and then like 17 years of Oro. So to put it lightly, my Hugo and my Alex are not very good. I mean, I'm obviously just better at the game. I've probably played more Hugo overall in my life than I've played Elena. But I've played a decent amount of Elena now in a recent way. And my Elena's obviously quite a bit better. God, when I was showing up to... Uh, um, I was getting so confident at uh, the Santa Ana Esports Arena back when they were doing third strike tournaments. I showed up to one with Elena and won it. And I beat a very decent player with my fucking Elena. Juju Mario, love this guy. He's a bit like Fey. Dead Strike doesn't really have a Fey. The closest you got is Yang. But this guy's more like Fey than Yang. He's super cool, honestly. They made two different versions of him. I think they were split um whether they want him to be able to do X or Y. Those were his records. And eventually they just made two different versions, one where you could do X and one where you could do Y. No. I mean, it's been something like that. I started in 2006. So it's been like 18 years. I think my Oro can legally drink. Or no, not drink. My, my Oro can get enlisted. My Oro can be drafted. Now... That's not 17 years of continuous play. If you've ever noticed, I play Street Fighter for like four hours continuously once every uh, like three weeks. And that's how it's always been. I am a binger when it comes to fighting games. I don't play for a long period. I, I, like, I like do fighting game stuff. Like I'm watching fighting game footage right now. But to actually play the games, I just do it like I do it for like a like a four to eight hour stretch. If I was taking it super seriously, really trying to improve and um, playing all the time, I would be a better player. The 17 years would be 17 years of me being a becoming a killer. But I've always just kind of been like a... I'm like an elevated casual player. You know what I mean? I've always thought that about myself. 
I've never played like I really was trying to improve. I mean, don't get me wrong, I try to win. But I, like, never st study. Or I study for reasons unrelated to trying to improve. Just because I, like, you know, I find it interesting what you can theoretically do in the engine. The things I study are not necessarily things my character can do to win. I do it pretty casually. I just make videos when I feel like it. I'm sure you can tell that. And I make them on whatever I t feel like talking about. One of my final primaries for SF5 was just like, hey, bro, ch jump out of the corner. And I think I was one of very few players to make a kind of, like, tutorial on something like that. Yeah, no doubt. It's just my experience. That's the 17 years really coming into play there. 18 years. When you've seen as much fighting game footage as I have, you get a sense for what kind of things are strong in the engine. Capcom usually makes the reason for their changes pretty apparent these days. There's like a component of, like I can look at a change, I can look at like, you know, this this move frame data increased from minus one to plus one. And it's, I have the experience to say, oh, like that means it's probably gonna go into a new special move that it didn't go into before. That means it's doing increased hit stun, which means that it's like maybe I used to go into the light version of a special, but now I can go into the medium version. And then I can look at those two specials and be like, okay, like extra 100 damage. Okay, that's probably not why they did it. Like it's better, but it's not why they did it. But then maybe like this one has a better Oki scenario. I can be like, oh yeah, they did it for this. Now you have Oki on this that you didn't used to have. Like Sakura. Giving Sakura heavy DP instead of medium DP is not a huge deal. SF5 Sakura. It's not a huge deal in terms of damage, but it is a huge deal in terms of she gets good Oki on the heavy one. That was an actual change she got for her uh, VT1 Fireball. They used to go into medium DP and then they started going to heavy. That was a big buff for her. And then they started going into VS2. Anyway, other people can read the change list, but that's a weapon I have just coming from years of experience is I can be like, okay, this is important because why? And then I'm able to explain why in a relatively concise way. That's what I bring to the table. It's actually for my convenience and not my viewer's convenience that my videos are so straightforward. It takes effort to like make something super presentable. I narrate because it's faster and easier than making like text on the screen. Oh, I remember that change. Yun EX uh, dash punch plus one on block or whatever. 
Yeah, I'm having trouble getting in. Look, Yum was one of the best characters in Ultra. But I think that was a very benign change. Uh, no, I'm not a doctor. You can call me uh, Baff RTR. Those are the letters that now come after my name. Bath parentheses, RT, close parentheses, new parentheses, R, close parentheses again. I like how he just has corkscrew blow. That right there. It's just corkscrew. Like, here's another thing that's a little bit Shades of Dudley. The fail doesn't stand for anything. It is meaningless. I just wanted a username that wouldn't be taken whenever I signed up for stuff that I could use on a lot of different things. I looked for obscure video game characters from games I liked, and I used a character from Bomberman the Second Attack, but then I got his name wrong. It's Bale Fail. And I felt no attachment to that character. I just picked it because it sounded kind of cool. It's meaningless. It's a meaningless name. Someone once told me it was like the same as Raphael, but with a B. And it like, caught me off guard because I didn't notice that until he told me. I don't know anything about Mahjong. You know that the meme with fucking what's it called? The ball game in um Futurama. Where it's like baseball but like it has a bunch of arbitrary rules that Fry doesn't know. And he just can't figure out what the fuck he's looking at. That's me with Mahjong. Learns ball. CNS2, like CBS? I see CNS and I think central nervous system. Um, it's cool to watch, but I've never really played it. Mahjong is like poker, if poker took skill, is a really hilarious way to put it. But a little bit, I, I understand. This is the Dudley on. Really interesting character here. He's got Dudley style TCs and a few Dudley t special moves. And then he's got a few Yun special moves. And then he's got like Gene, I think. Super weird character, but super cool. Chun Li can Ryu. This is a super strange concept for a character to roll Dudley and Dudley and Yun to one person. But they really kinda did it. He's he's cool. Yeah, he's got ducking. Grappler Zoner. JP. <laughs> I think there has been. Oh, there's Dudley's crouching round house. I can't think of a grappler zoner in Blaze Blue. Dalsum Ultra Two. Okay. Technically. Anacaris, good answer. I didn't think of him at all. 
That's a very good answer. Ah, uh, um, VT2 Poison. There you go, there's your grappling zoner. Is that even the right one? The one with the command grab. Did he really just be mesh today? I don't know what they call the buttons in this game. There's strong punch, weak punch, strong kick, and weak kick. So it's very much like King of Fighters. So you could just call them ABCD if you want. Or CADV in the order that I listed them. No, this is not. Super cool little combo. Universal overhead. Everyone has that. It's probably pretty hard to dev a game. That reminds me, I'm finally working on my game again, after like a year of no updates. You guys should see the main character. We got sprites. Oh yeah, the new Prince of Persia game. I have free time now, I should get that. It looked really good. I watched one of my um my oops play it. There's some great irony to me saying one of my oops. My character does have a name. However, it is privileged information. Oomph means one of my followers. So when I said one of my oops, I said one of my uh, one of my followers. Prince of Persia was a dead IP forever. Then they were working on like an Indian produced um, Sands of Time remake. And something happened with its development that it got delayed forever. Probably related to the fact that it got um, uh, outsourced to India. They probably like, you know, I'm not saying they couldn't make it over in fucking whatever studio was making it over there. But it probably added some extra steps. Put it like that. Uh, no, there was, there was one. There was an interquel to the Sands of Time trilogy, after the reboot one. Forgotten Sands. It came out with the movie. I don't even know if that was the most recent one before the recent runs. Forgotten Sands saw exactly zero players. I thought it was a movie game and I didn't play it and then when I finally played it like way later I was like super caught off guard at how good it was. It got really bad reviews when it came out. And then everyone skipped it because they thought it was a movie game. And it's not a movie game. And it's not even in a side universe. It's the same Prince from Prince of Persia Saints of Time trilogy. It's just a new game in that series. It's now a quadrilogy. I have really mixed feelings about the reboot. It was kind of bad. I didn't find the platforming super interesting. And rather amusingly, um, you could not die during the platforming. I didn't hate that, but I found it really strange. You just got a cutscene of your character being rescued anytime you fell into a pit. And there was no penalty. You just literally could not die from falling.
Yeah. Now, what would happen if you were playing Saints of Time is you would just rewind time. So the same thing would happen. You would just not be in the hole anymore. You just instantly get rescued from the fucking pit. But that used a resource, so it felt a little bit more fair. And it was possible to run out of the resource and then actually die. On paper, I don't mind when a game just like cuts the bullshit with game overs. Like You don't need game overs, you know what I mean? I don't find them to be a necessary step. But I feel like there should be something. Some It should either be not too hard, and there should be some kind of tiny penalty. Even just doing something over again, if you mess up. Or it should be super hard, and there should be no penalty. Favorite RPG? Final Fantasy XII. Specifically the Zodiac versions. I actually prefer Zodiac Age to International Zodiac Job System, and yes, I did beat both multiple times. I don't mind that Zodiac Age is easier. I think it's a better design game. I think it's more fun to have six jobs than three. I mean, uh, 12 jobs than six. I also love the story, and I love the gameplay. Least favorite RPG? Robopon 2. Glad you asked. Robopon 2 is the most mediocre game I've ever beaten. It's not horrible, it's okay. I streamed it. I did. I have a full playthrough on my YouTube. And for the about two-thirds of the game, I was just not enjoying myself. And I was just playing it because I like played it growing up and I wanted to know what it was like to get deep into it. Robopon 1 is already a very mid-game. Robopon 1 is... So you know Hudson is like the Bomberman company? They're not super like famous in the West. Bomberman's like not a great series, honestly. It's had a few good games here and there. Bomberman Tournament is quite good. Maybe Generations is, is quite good. Most people like 64, Second Attack, Hero. I usually just don't even play games. Like, I don't complete them if I hate them. But I've beaten some NES games I found to be profoundly, like, not fun that I've beaten. Just with save states, if that counts. Like, I've beaten, um... I've beaten Silver Surfer, and I didn't like that game. I already don't like shmups. I don't know why I beat it, I just wanted to see what would happen. Um, Dragon Quest games are extremely good. 7 is up there for me as one of my all-time favorite games. I fucking love 7. And Monsters. And Monsters 2. These are great games. I like strategy RPGs more than like JRPGs, though. So if we're counting strategy RPGs and favorite RPGs, then it'd probably be like FFT or FFTA2. Or like one of the Fire Emblem games, Three Houses, I guess. Stopped in the final dungeon? You played like a 100 hours game and you stopped in the final dungeon? The last boss is pretty damn hard in that game, honestly. Metal Slug Tactics demo? No, I have not. That reminds me I need to get Triangle Strategy. Ogre Tactics? You mean Ogre, ogre Battle? Like, rather, uh, Tactics Ogre. That's what you mean. Yes, I played uh, Let Us Cling Together, and I played um, uh, Night of Lotus. Yeah, I did all those. Most Dragon Quest games require a little bit of grinding. It's not fun either. Let's cling together is one of my favorite tactics games. I really wanted to like Reborn. And I like about the first two thirds of it. 
I find to be good. And then I find the difficulty spike to be horrible. It gets way too hard near the end. You're also perpetually strapped for cash, unless you just use the glitch. There's a, a blowgun you can make where the it sells for more than the ingredients, and you can just buy the ingredients in the store. So you can just farm infinite money very, very quickly by just um, synthesizing the blowgun and then selling it in large quantities. If you don't do that, you're just perpetually poor. And the battles are just really hard. I tried to have like a good variety of units for balance, and I think you can't really do that. I think a good team has like several what do you call it, ninjas, and then like several knights, and then maybe like a I don't know, several mages, and that's it. That's how you need to build your party. Hudson is mostly known for Bomberman. But they've had like they've made random stuff before. All right, we'll just go to fucking games that Hudson's made. But they published a lot of games. That was a nice pay. It's astonishing how low Bomberman's cultural impact has been, considering how many Bomber game, Bomberman gamings exist. Considering it's like up there with like Pac-Man, it's like an early arcade game that like did super well. It's not as early as Pac-Man, of course. This is return to classic bath right here. Me up at 5 a.m. talking to Twitch chat. No, I haven't slept today. I've been up since 10.30 a.m. yesterday. Just got into streaming. I didn't mean to. Just forgot that I liked it. I've got a lot of free time coming up. I've, I can make some time to do this again. I don't know. Just nice chatting. Forgot how much I liked it, that's all. I see this guy use the Gene. I don't know if he like knows how to use it well. Hell yeah, huge Dudley energy right now. This is how it actually feels to be cornered versus Dudley. We gave Dudley good energy. I would love to do a stream playthrough of... Um, Final Fantasy Tactics content, 1.3 content. I started a stream playthrough of uh, FF12. Uh, had like a, a a a fan job system that someone made. But to play through that entire game again, to play new jobs is, I don't know. I feel like I just want to play the old jobs again. <laughs> Like, that game is still fresh to me, playing the base version. I've been playing through FFT again, FF, FFTA2. Love that game a lot. I think I've done a stream playthrough of that, right? Pretty sure. My initial playthrough, I didn't beat it. And then I think my second playthrough ever, I beat it. And that was the one I streamed. Inkling to go back to Showdown. I still like pay attention to competitive Pokemon. But I haven't played it in a minute. 
That's not true. I actually put together a team somewhat recently just to fuck around. It was in a weird tier. I think I did it in RU. I think I did it in Gen 9 RU. I saw that Gen 9 RU had a lot of my like favorite classic like OU and UU threats, and I was just like, hell yeah, let's do this. And I was just like, let's just put five mons, six mons I like just on a squad together and see what we can do. Well, it might have been UU. I remember there's a lot of Cleavor. Whatever tier Cleavor is in, it was like the king of the tier I was playing. It was either UU or RU. And I was like, holy shit, this mon is like... I was like, I never thought that mon was that good. And then I, it's sitting in front of me, and I'm like, what am I even supposed to do to this? This beats my whole team. And it gets Stealth Rock up while it's doing it. I always find it very interesting to see, like, Smogon uh, patch, and not, not patch, but like, you know, Smogon uh, tier shifts. Most of the time they do it purely on usage. Sometimes by vote, usually by usage. And it's really interesting to see, like, a, a mod that's been doing well, and then everyone's been using it. Jesus, I thought Lando T was the king. How the mighty have fallen. Lando T was a sleeper when it came out. Really interesting, that mon's development. It was like a wall with no healing. Whoa. Hi. I'm being favorited by Reich's, Reich, Reichmans. Took a few attempts, I haven't said it in a while. Dude, did I see some titties? Hanzo. She has the charge command grab. It's her, by the way. The whole reason we're watching this game. Because someone asked if a character ever had a charge command grab. And then I found footage of this game, but then I didn't find Hanzo. She's super weird. I've never played a character like her. That move was good. I thought she could jump cancel it, but this one didn't. I can't think of another fucking... Okay, he jumped cancel that time. That's true. Barcelona is a charge command grab. In some Street Fighter titles. Real ones will remember... Um, Maki having an air SPD, but no ground command grab. Real ones will remember Maki. I should have just stopped there. Without looking it up, what fighting game is Maki from? It's actually a very popular one, so people would probably know it. She's not often picked. Cool combo. A gangster my, that's accurate. There's just going to be one street fight, I mean, one fighting game timeline. Eventually. Akuma is already a canon character in Tekken. If we get Terry to be a canon character in Street Fighter, that's it. That means Terry's now a canon character in Tekken. The King of Iron Fist tournament, the King of Fighters tournament, and whatever the fuck the name of the Street Fighter tournament is, are all just happening at the same time. Most Street Fighter games don't have a, a tournament. 
2 and 3 do. Maybe an alpha. It's not super clear. I can't believe the lore of Seth is just the same as the lore of combat. I should say the lore of 22 or whatever the actual fucking last boss of Street Fighter 4 is called. Cool gamer fact, the last boss of SF4 is not Seth. Who here knew that? I bet you all did. Oh yeah, Ree's also in Power Rangers. Extremely lewd crouch position. How did they make a character design this lewd? I'm very sleepy. Whoa, how did she do that? Chadha. This is probably one of my favorite grapplers in a fighting game. And uh, one of the most interesting things out of this game. So we've got a spiritual Hugo. So Hugo is already quite a bit different from Zangief. And this takes the Hugo parts of Hugo and drives them up. So we've got a grappler with ship movement, and we've got a spiritual clap. And the clap is crazy. That um, There's that. That's it. There's another one. His combos are really fucking cool. Um, one kind of unique thing about him that you guys probably know if you know anything about this game is that his super is a 720 motion, but you can keep on spinning. And the number of spins you do is the amount of damage it does. Up to five. But there's like a countdown for how fast you have to spin in order to get like um um like you have to do all of the spinning that you do you have to do within a certain time threshold. And you have to spin really fucking fast to get five spins in time. Giga Death Pressure. He's got kind of dominant neutral normals. Neutral dominant normals. His movement's shitty, but like, you know, you deal with it. And then he's got the command grabs too. That move is crazy, his clap equivalent move. Spun. Oh, 
snatched. You guys see that shit? She was like in the air and he was in the air. And then it's like, nope. You're in my hands. Uh, yeah, this is the L4 I take care of. I'm about 90% sure. She has run stop pressure. And that move is super good. One of them has a really good version of the... Oh, there's the wake up super. That was it. That was five, that was five uh, 360s. Did you guys see the damage on that shit? It's hard to do. It's really hard to do. Bump, 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 bump. However many SPD, however many rotations you get is the number of jumps he does. I think. My dude spun. He picked the other super as his main super. He's like, yeah, I've already done everything I can do with Super 1. He's got some funny grandma stuff with Fierce, I think. Hard punch. <laughs> oh, what a just lands the EX slap and then he just fucking resets instantly. I don't know. I actually don't know how to churn. I don't know how people get to that level. I don't even know how people get to a point where they can consistently do, like, fucking Stain Fierce Hands with Honda or whatever. Whatever people do with Honda. But I'm sure other people look at me and they're like, how the fuck do you do fucking chicken combo on Shadows? Interesting trade. Um, I mean, I was playing Lily for a little while just recently. I played Laura when she was back in vanilla as a five. That wasn't great, though. I play, the way I play grapplers, I usually kind of ignore the command grab about 80% of the time. I play a very timid, careful grappler when I play grapplers. I'm not bad at it, though, but I'm not like, you know. Great. My Lily's in Master. I was good enough to get there. Master's not particularly hard to get into if you're like, you know. If you have the amount of experience I have. If you're if SF6 is your first fighting game, it's a fight. Or even if it's your second fighting game you're taking seriously. It's a fight to get to master. You gotta really learn. You gotta study. But I was like, you know. That was good enough to get into master like two weeks into the game being out. It's not the most flattering photo of him, is it? Co-player, by the way. Well, it's all the same guy. This is the one that's kind of Ryu and kind of Kenish. I think. They rolled Ryu and Ken into one guy.
is uh, Shinku Hadoken. Nice for punish. Low forward super. That's how we play. Sweep is like a command normal. It's actually the same system that ended up getting used by Modern for SF6. Sweep is like down forward heavy kick. Crush jab, 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 heavy DP. Like SF4 Ken. Does guard break, you have to parry it, but it's reactable. A little bit like drive impact, isn't it? Oh, I've nearly made it through the whole video. Oh, we jumped through a bunch of the beginning part. Overhead. I don't like how this game did parries. That's really the thing that kind of put me off it. And also how annoying it is to get online matchmaking. Parries have like no commitment in this game. Like even less than they have in Street Fighter 3. There are dedicated parry buttons. And you don't need to tap a direction. You can block in one direction and mash parry in another direction. Mash is extremely dishonest of me. If you're blocking one direction and try parry in another direction, the parry window is significantly smaller because they anticipated that would be good. You can see the on the screen right here. This one and this one, that's high parry and low parry. You can see when someone parries. In third strike, it can be really difficult to see what parries people are going for and when. That's like download you can do in third strike. That's a real thing. You just let someone wake up. You know, you're baiting a DP or you're baiting like a wake up throw and you're trying to shimmy or whatever. But you see what they do on wake up. You see like the forward tap into the what, whatever button they tap. And that's like, that's something you can like observe in your opponents. Yes, parry is a button. In this game, you can just see on the screen what parries people are going for. It's kind of interesting. It's different. I don't mind that part, but I want parry to have more risk than it seems to in this game. I think the the shining star of what makes parries good in SF3 is they're actually fairly easy to hit. I don't know what the parry window is like in this game. It could be big, it could be small, I have no idea. Parry window is quite large in SF3. I'm sure you guys know all the fucking variables, like, you know, if there's air to ground parry, ground to air parry, or fucking um, if you hold forward versus if you just tap it or whatever. But on paper, before any crazy modifiers, the parry window is something like 10 frames in SF3. 8 to 10, give or take. It's 10 of you, 10 of you just tap. Um, and that's quite large. The thing is, that's a very large amount of time in terms of like, you know, a window in fighting games. But it's still minuscule in terms of your opponent attacking with a window where you have no idea where it is. Where it could just be whenever. It's only a long time if you have a good read. You watch beginners try and parry and they're, they're horrible at it. But then you watch good players parry and they just know the moments where people press. In fact, they, they, they trick you into the moments where you press. I do it. Fucking every player like A and up does it all the fucking time. They put you in scenarios where you want to press, and then you press, and they parry it, and you die. That's the key I try to teach people when they're trying to learn SF3. Not when they're trying to learn it, because that's kind of, like, beyond learning. Like, I feel like... You, I mean, you can go for parries. Just experiment with it. You will never be good at it if you don't experiment with it. But, um... Um... 
you can't just like tap forward when the opponent gets close to you. You have to have a plan. You have to have a thing that you're looking for when you parry. That's the big key. That's when parry start be, stop being a liability and start being a weapon. Is when you're anticipating something. That's the shift. If you're a beginner, you can't anticipate anything. You don't know what's about to happen. Amusingly, when you're fighting beginners, you often have no idea what's about to happen, because they don't, you know, they don't behave in a predictable way. I have a really hard time parrying against beginners. I, I body them, but I have a really hard time parrying against them because they're just unpredictable. There are some things I really like about SF6 parry and some things I don't love. Sure, you can. Yeah, use parries to supplement your offense is a very frequently. That's the advice I give frequently. That's another core concept or a kind of more general version of the core concept. I don't love how they implemented uh, Perry, but I don't know how I would have done it differently, and there are things I like a lot about it. I think it's a little too hard to do, and I think it's a little too good when you get it. It sounds weird to say I would put even more scaling on parry when it's already scaled to shit. And I would open it up too. <laughs> I would make the parry window even bigger. I'd probably make parries less advantageous. For example, you can't cancel a parried move. But I w if it was up to me, I would probably make it so a move that's parried can still be cancelled. And that would just keep that extra layer. The fighting game I've long considered making myself would have parries, like Third Strike style parries in it, but... Um, uh, my thought is that special moves would be unparable. That's how I would do it. I would have it so if you did anti or DP, it would just be a catch all. It would just be a punish on a jump. But if you did anti air like towards A, it could lead to a juggle, but it could be parried. I think stuff like that is fun. Is there a juggle there? I do appreciate that you. there's no question of whether your thing is going to be fast enough. 
with perfect parry in the in the current state. Like obviously if you perfect parry you jump in safe jump you'll probably not get anything. But like oftentimes, you know, you perfect perfect parry and attack on the ground. Let's say you're Ryu. Probably like ninety nine percent of the time you can just immediately hard punch. And then heavy Hashogeki or whatever. When like 99% of your parries lead to at least a plus. What is Ryu's hard punch? 10 frames? I actually don't know the number offhand. 9? Seems like it would be about that fast. When all those perfect parries give you at least that amount of time, you know, you don't have to think about, like, what you parried and whatever. They buffed it, but they buffed its frame advantage. I don't think they changed its start up. They made it so you can combo punish counter hard punch into heavy Hashogeki. Which is quite nice for his punish combos. Mr. Gimmick. Yes, I have. That's the one with the little green guy who can make orbs, right? Ten frames. I have never beaten it, no. I know that you can, like, there's, like, hidden objects in every stage and, like, a bonus ending. It's quite hard. It's got a high skill ceiling in a good way. I like games like that where you've got a simple mechanic, but you can do crazy things with it. Wow. Video's over. Alright, I'm going to bed. It's been fun. Bye, everyone.